what numbers could we see? Uh, thanks, Gemma. Look, they could be coming from uh, the microstates of the Pacific. In fact, that's highly likely. Uh, they could also be coming from a number of place across, uh, places across Southeast Asia. We know, for instance, that at the moment there are about 750,000 Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh. Uh, but that's just the tip of the iceberg of the kind of numbers we could be talking about. I've actually just come back from a new Colombo plan uh, mobility study trip uh, to Indonesia, Singapore and Thailand. It was very interesting to talk to people in Jakarta and in Bangkok about their fears about the cities basically uh, submerging in the next few years, potentially. Mm -hmm. So there's a real sense across Southeast Asia and beyond that uh, sea level rise, the, the climatic change, uh, the, the prospect for inundation is real. It's palpable. It's generating real fears. In Indonesia, they're talking about relocating the capital. Uh, good luck. In Thailand, they're talking about reinforcing the dam walls and the, and the uh, water control mechanisms. But there really is concern more about places like Bangladesh, which is already only just above sea level and which is already subject to massive inundation uh, quite frequently, uh, of that prospect becoming even worse and that driving the kind of uh, large-scale migration that defence planners rightly uh, have been thinking about. I mean, after all, let's think about it. What do we want our Defence Department people to be doing but thinking about the worst-case scenarios and then looking for mitigating strategies? And that looks like to be what they're trying to do at the moment. And on the predictions, there's also an increased potential for conflict. Mm. What are the predictions there? Well, I mean, the problem is that uh, when land is scarce and when people start relocating, it generates all sorts of pushback and uh, knock-on consequences. We see that on the border between Bangladesh and Myanmar at the moment. Uh, we see it elsewhere as well. Uh, and it's not just in Southeast Asia, but it's also in uh, parts of Africa, where we know that a lot of people movement happens in relation to uh, water shortages or floods and drought. Uh, so the, we're talking about variations that are not just just in one direction and not just in one pattern. Uh, they're multifaceted. But for Australia, it's worth thinking about for a while the prospect we face in the Pacific of we already have a, a great a considerable increase in the frequency of natural disasters occurring, the severity of which seems to be on the increase, generating real concern, existential concern, for the prospects of some of the microstates in the Pacific. And here's where uh, the Prime Minister's Pacific step up is a step in the right direction, but it's only one step up. We need several steps up and they need to be more inclusive. Very interesting to hear that uh, the Chief of Defence Force, General Angus Campbell, has, in a private conversation that was le uh, leaked to the media recently, talked about the need to think about and reflect on the implications of climate change for security. And I think that's got real ramifications, particularly for Australia's engagement in the Pacific. Here's where uh, we do need to think in a whole new way about our obligation to our neighbours. And we'll also be called on uh, for humanitarian and disaster relief operations and presum presumably largely in the Pacific there mm. as well. How will our Defence Force cope in terms of numbers? Well, look, uh, I was recently on a, a military e e exercise Indo-Pacific uh, endeavour, which uh, took uh, a new amphibious ship around the Pacific, uh, across to India, Sri Lanka and across Southeast Asia. I was there for one leg of it, but what it demonstrated is the cap cap capability of the Defence Force to operate in uh, this new, you know, they call it HADR, Humanitarian Assistance and Disaster Relief. It's a bit of a growth industry because the world is demanding this kind of support more so than ever. So that's one way in which the Defence Force can respond. But look, it's only the tip of the iceberg. We need a, a more comprehensive, holistic response that's about engaging with the communities in the Pacific and in Southeast Asia constructively, proactively, looking to uh, engage with them for their felt needs needs to basically preempt actions, uh, preempt crises and look to essentially bolster security and stability in our neighbourhood to mitigate the risk of it having knock-on consequences in Australia. And in terms of the military also, climate change could have a direct effect on military training bases as well. 
Yes, well, a lot of the Australian Defence Forces facilities are right on the shoreline. Many of the facilities are, uh, you know, just above sea level uh, and are subject to periodic inundation as it stands. So as that prospect grows, uh, there is real concern about uh, what, might, what might happen to defence real estate. But let's face it, this isn't just about defence real estate, this is about the nation and the globe. So while we look to the Defence Force to be first responders in a lot of these crises, uh, this is something bigger than a Defence Force and it requires, while the Defence Force has a role to play, it requires a more holistic government response and that's something that a number of scholars are now looking to address. Uh, I know uh, colleagues at the ANU are thinking about this long and hard. Uh, retired Admiral Chris Barry has been engaging on this. Climate change is a real issue. But the, my uh, paper I've just written, a geostrategic SWOT analysis for Australia, argues that essentially that's not just climate change change, but it's also not just about great power contestation, but it's about a combination of the spectrum of global uh, potential cl uh, climate catastrophe, uh, great power contestation, coupled with uh, the dark web, uh, ungoverned spaces of crime, international crime, uh, people smuggling, drug smuggling. The, the, the combination of these factors is generating a crisis that's bigger than the Defence Force. It's bigger than the Home Affairs Department and the Border Force, and it requires a pretty imaginative reconstruction of our engagement with the neighbourhood. Pacific Reset, great, but let's go a lot further. Professor John Blacksland from the Australian National University, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Gemma.